Hey everyone, it's Ashley with Southern Sewing Company. Welcome back to my channel. Today you're here for part six in our beginning quilting series. It is all about free motion quilting. I could definitely fill an entire series just on free motion quilting, but I'm gonna try to sum it up as best I can into one part. First, we're gonna talk about a way that you can practice free motion quilting without even touching your sewing machine. We're also gonna walk through some beginner friendly free motion quilting designs that you can try at home and then if you can master those and kind of get creative. So let's get started. What I always tell people when they want to start free motion quilting is grab a piece of paper and grab a pen. <laughs> Take the time to familiarize yourself with your design on a piece of paper. Number one, by drawing it out. And number two is how I'm about to show you. As you can see here, I have a piece of paper, I have a pen, and I have this kind of thing I'm about to read. If you have somebody that you can get to help you, have them hold a pen upright over your piece of paper. I do not have somebody, so instead I'm going to rig this as best as I can. If you can think of a smarter way to do this, do tell. So, that took me a minute. <laughs> I have taped my pen onto my phone holder, and this is going to work for now. What we are going to do is kind of mimic how we would free motion, and this is going to help your hands kind of figure out in which direction to move. With one hand on each side of our pen, just like we would on our sewing machine, we're gonna move our paper freely and see what happens with our pen. So as you can see, I am just keeping my fingertips on my paper just like I would my sewing machine. And I'm just moving because this is how we would sew, right? So we're gonna try, I'm gonna try some up and down waves. You can even try to write your name. The idea here is just to get your body used to, and your hands used to how you're going to quilt. Try this at home, it's a lot easier if you can get somebody to help you. <laughs> you kinda get the idea here. Just kinda keep playing around. And once you figure out a new design that you'd like to try, this is a really great way to do it. So this week we're gonna need two things. Number one is quilting gloves. Do not skip on these. You don't even, don't even start free motion quilting unless you have quilting gloves. You will thank me later. There is a link in the description box below. If you're looking for a pair, these were $7. Number two is a free motion quilting foot. As I've mentioned in the last two videos, don't buy these off Amazon. Don't buy them off Timu. Go straight to the manufacturer of your sewing machine. Refer back to the handbook that came with your sewing machine. It'll have a list of parts and then search for that part on a site like sewingmachineparts.com, sewing parts online, and look for one there if you don't have one already. These are the only two things that you're gonna need for this week. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to install your free motion foot on your sewing machine. So let's get our machine set up for free motion quilting. I am going to take my turnkey. I'm going to take out the screw on the side of my sewing machine and then remove my walking foot, which is on there now. So that's off. So we're going to take our free motion foot. Sometimes these are called darning feet. And we're going to put this hole right over our screw. And then we're going to attach it to our presser foot bar here. And you definitely want to make sure that this connection right here between the free motion foot and your machine is level. We don't want it sitting down here and we don't want it all the way up here. Your screw kind of helps to make sure that it does stay straight, but I kind of like to double check just to make sure. I'm going to hand screw this in and then tighten it with my turnkey here. So there is our free motion foot ready to go. Step number two is we want to lower the feed dogs on our machine. So to do that, on my machine, it's right here. Um, you can see here the feed dogs, and then it's gonna be flat. So I'm gonna switch this to my feed dogs down. On other machines, it's gonna be somewhere different. So refer to your owner's manual to see how to do this specifically. Right now, my feed dogs are up. So when I put them down, they do just like they say, and this area now becomes flat. And I can freely move my fabric across this without the feed dogs mechanically trying to pull my fabric through. If you're trying to free motion quilt, that is the top thing that you have to be able to do. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to pull up your bobbin thread, which is important anytime you start free motion quilting or if you start anywhere inside of a quilt top, you always want to pull up your bobbin thread because if you don't, if you just start sewing, then you're going to get this ugly nest of thread in the back that's not really pretty. You don't really want to see that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hold our needle thread in one hand and we're going to use the other hand to hand crank our needle in one whole rotation. Always turn your hand crank towards you to move your needle. Don't turn it away from you. But we're going to do one whole rotation so that our needle is back up at the top. And then we're going to pull on this top thread and it's going to pull up our bobbin thread. So now you can see we have two threads in our hand, one from the needle and one from the bobbin. And if I hold this securely with my left hand, I'm going to take a couple stitches in place or just lightly moving to lock this right there. I'm going to shorten these just for now and then I'll come back and trim them later. But from here, we're ready to start free motion quilting. So there's two ways you can tie off. Number one is to use your hand crank, rotate your needle upward, lift your presser foot, and then pull your thread away. And then you'll have these two long tails that you can, um, that you can tie and then bury. Um, the next thing that I typically do is, pretending I was already attached here, is I will take a couple, a couple stitches in place and then I'll just use my thread cutter. Before we get started with our beginner quilting designs, I'm gonna talk about some kind of random things that go along with free motion quilting that's easier to see and tell you than it is to show you on the blog post. Number one, you go through a lot of thread while you're free motion quilting. Have a set of bobbins already wound and ready to go, and that way if you run out of thread mid quilt, you don't have to stop, unthread your machine, do the bobbins come back it's much easier just to go ahead and pop one in and keep going one of the trickier things with free motion quilting especially when you're used to just sewing or using a walking foot is our feed dogs are down at this point so they do not help us at all move the fabric through the machine like we're used to it's kind of a new concept when you think about using your foot and moving your hands at the same time it's a whole new motor skill that is really something that you have to work out in your brain and finding a balance between how fast to move your hands and how fast to, to use the speed on your machine really makes a difference in things like stitch length. When we free motion quilt, the stitch length on our machine means absolutely nothing. You are creating the stitch length. I've got a quilt sandwich that I'm about to show you how to work on. Just practice kind of moving things around and get a feel for things. And then we can dive into the quilting designs that I'm about to show you too. I'm gonna to show you how you can get started. I know how daunting it seems to even get to this point, and it seems a little scary. First thing we're gonna do is keep our hands on both sides. And as we move and we need to readjust our hands, completely stop and take your foot off the pedal, readjust your hands, and then slowly get started again. We're just gonna start moving. And as you can see, my machine is moving pretty slowly at this point, and my hands are moving slowly. So you can see my stitches are pretty small. If I start moving my hands faster, look how big my stitches get. See how big my stitches are? If I were to increase my speed, but keep my hands moving at the same rate, my stitches start to look a little more like they're supposed to. Sometimes I believe that stitch length really is a personal preference. You might like those big stitches and that's perfectly fine. Figure out what works best for you. So I'm gonna use my foot pedal and go fast at this point and move my hands slowly. See how tiny my stitches are? And this is perfectly fine, but God forbid you mess up, this would be very hard to unpick. We do not wanna unpick it. Another important fact, don't run over your hand while sewing. <laughs> Just don't do that. <laughs> okay, so now we can kind of see the difference between moving our hand and our foot, and we kind of want to find a good balance, right? I 
and we can kind of keep an eye on our stitches. If I go really fast, I can kind of move my hands a little bit faster. As you can see on the back, my stitches look pretty much okay over here, but right here, as you can see, they don't really look, they look like they're pretty loose on the bottom. So I would actually try to increase my tension just a little bit and then see how it looks after that. But I hope this kind of gives you the idea of how things work. Um, after you kind of get the, get the motion of the foot and the hands and how one kind of affects the other in a smooth pace at moving your hands, next you can try Try drawing, try drawing anything. Um, you can try to make a heart, you can try make a circle. Just get used to your hands moving the fabric around. So you can try your name. And while you're practicing um, making things, you don't really necessarily have to worry about your stitch length. This is more, controlling your fabric as you move it around, creating something. And as far as the hand placement, like I was talking about earlier, once your hands are kind of past the point of being right centered with your needle, stop your machine completely, move your hands back, and then start. Definitely don't stop right in the middle of a circle because it's probably not going to be a nice circle at that point. <laughs> if you find yourself having a hard time making any kind of designs, move your foot faster. It's, I know this sounds crazy, but if you go a little bit faster, it's kind of easier to make different designs. If you're going at this pace, do you know how hard it is to make a perfect circle? very challenging. Another idea while you practice is to take um, a pen, water soluble pen. If you're using a scrap piece of paper, a regular Sharpie would work, but you can draw a circle. You can draw a heart. You can draw, draw a letter and either mimic around these or try to follow the lines just as practice. Just, this is just all these techniques are just practice, kind of getting your body used to moving fabric around. So now that we're more comfortable with the idea of moving our hands and the speed of our machine in free motion quilting, we're going to walk through some beginner friendly quilting designs that you can use to kind of build up your confidence and then you can turn those into something later. So first we're gonna talk about a meandering line and this is also called stipling and this is one of my favorite designs to do. You can scale it really small or you can scale it really big depending on what you're trying to achieve. The idea with this is we are creating this line that is continuously moving and wiggling and that's really the trick here is the line keeps moving in different directions and it's always gonna be kind of curving. And when I look at the different curves that I'm trying to achieve, um, there's not really a way, shape, or form to it. I'm just kind of going in whatever direction. And if I'm thinking about, you know, my quilt and there's a block over here I want to avoid, then, you know, I'll go around it or go down. But I tend to kind of work in rows. As you saw, I went from left to right and now I'm kind of working my way back around. and I'm always moving and I'm always changing directions. I never stay in one direction for too long. And the entire time I'm doing this wavy line like this, the only difference is this wave kind of turns into a curve and then it goes in another direction, then it goes into another direction. So here is the basic idea and it doesn't, mine always kind of ends up having these little groupings, but they don't have to. We can, we can go down here and we can turn we can come back. Sometimes it's helpful to imagine something in your brain when you're trying to do these designs and it always kind of makes me laugh because these designs always kind of reminds me of a bone, like the edge of a bone. 
um, like right here, I'll see a bone or right here. So if you kind of envision something in your brain, it kind of makes it a little easier to draw, but if you can fill up an entire page practicing your design and even trying it with the other method that I showed you with someone either holding the pen or you getting something to hold it for you, over the course of an entire page, your brain kind of starts to take over and you don't really have to think about it as much and it becomes much easier. So now I'm gonna show you how to achieve this on your machine, same basic principle, but we are going to be using our hands like this instead of our pen like this. We're making a wavy line and it's gonna continue moving in all directions. And I think the main trick to a meandering line, well, two main tricks, is to number one, always keep your line moving. See how it's constantly wiggling in one direction or the other. I'm never continuously going one way. The next trick is to make sure that all of the spacing between your lines is consistent. So as you can see, this distance is about the same as this distance, which is the same, yeah, a little bigger there, but it's all primarily the same and that's really what makes it flow. So continuing on. I'm just still doing these wiggly lines and constantly switching directions. Sometimes I'll do a pretty nice curve. And then really working to utilize all of the free space that I have. Here's our meandering line, all finished close up. You can see the back. This is a really neat option and it creates a lot of movement throughout the course of a whole quilt. This design can be scaled really tiny or it can be scaled really big. And if you're in a hurry, that's a really good option. Or if you have a lot of time and you want a lot of dense quilting, you can do these really close together. If your meandering line doesn't look something quite like this or similar, the main point, if you take anything away from learning to free motion quilt with me, is the consistency between lines is what makes your work look good. If you have a lot of inconsistencies, for example, there's you know a quarter of an inch space here, but then there's three inches of space over here between lines, people are much more likely to notice big gaps in quilting um, or really, really tiny bunches of quilting versus mistakes over the entire course of a quilt because it's gonna show up more. And the drawing, I think, really, really helps with that because it kind of trains your brain on how far apart to keep things. Design number two is a wavy line. And this is really neat. I did show you how to do this with your walking foot, but it's the same concept with your free motion foot, except it goes a lot quicker. So same with our meandering line that we just did. We're gonna start on one end of our quilt and we're just gonna make a wave all the way down. And then when we get to the end, we're gonna get off of our quilt top here, scoot down. So you're not gonna see these lines on the edge. Then we're gonna go back up. Now I think it's really neat to make each line its own individual kind of entity. And they're not copying each other, they're just kind of flowing in whichever direction that they choose. And sometimes they might even cross over each other, which I think is also kind of neat, especially when you think of a whole quilt. So I'm just gonna go back and forth across my page. Keep in mind, it's much easier to draw these designs than it is to free motion quilt, but at least you're kind of teaching your brain what you want it to do and what you're kind of, you're kind of getting a game plan ahead of time. So I'm gonna start on one end and I'm gonna just move my fabric back and forth. And when I get halfway through, if my hands get too far away, I'm gonna pull them back to me. I'm not gonna follow my quilt with it. <laughs> so when I get to the end of my line, I'm gonna stop. And you can even quilt off of your quilt and then move down a little bit. 
and then begin again going in the opposite direction. If you need to lift up your presser foot to get your quilt top back under it, do so now. But we're gonna do the same thing and we're just gonna move in the opposite direction. I'm not really doing any kind of rhyme or reason. I'm kind of doing big and small. It's okay if they overlap. continue doing this all the way through this work and these are so neat and these are very similar to the walking foot waves that we discussed just a different way to do it and it's much faster with the free motion foot the only difference is it's a little more difficult to start and stop when you're thinking about quilting and you have to stop and kind of reposition your hands to keep moving the transition point is definitely something that you're gonna see if you don't carefully kind of ease back into your curve or pay attention to which direction you stopped your curve and then continue on if that makes any sense. But this is a really neat option and this is how I actually quilted my own quilt but with a walking foot so I can't wait to show you that next week. We're gonna talk about swirls. I'm gonna start at one end and I'm going to complete an entire circle and follow that curve back around and create another circle. And I'm gonna do this throughout my paper. This is a very simple design and it gives you a really good, gives you a lot of practice for curves and circles, which could translate later into swirls and swirls with hooks. Um, and this is a really easy all over design that you can achieve pretty quickly. Um, some free motions designs tend to take a lot of time. So this one is really simple. These always kind of remind me of a roller coaster and that's kind of what I envision as I do these. And creating a perfect circle on a free motion quilt is difficult in the beginning and it definitely gets easier the more that you practice. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quilt a line and a circle attached to it. And I'm gonna continue on. And I'm gonna go in the next direction and do a different circle. And the trick with this design is completely, let me turn it over so you can see. The trick to this design is completely doing your circle and then continuing on to kind of keep that circle going. If you were to go here and then immediately do a different loop, while that doesn't look bad, um, doing it this way, we doing it this way where we continue our curve after our circle in the same direction that our circle went, kind of makes it a little more flowing correctly, in my opinion. However, you really can take these designs and do whatever you want with them. And I'm kind of going all over the quilt. Um, there's no rhyme or reason as to which direction that I'm going or why. Sometimes the circles are bigger and sometimes they're smaller. This is one of those designs that it's very helpful to practice. Here's a view of the loops that I showed you just a minute ago. And these really kind of blend in with a quilt and I think it's really cool. So one of the most important things that I want you to take away from free motion quilting is that it's okay to not be perfect. If you finish your quilt and you have something that you're proud of and you are proud to show people, that is all that matters. At the end of the day, nobody is gonna notice your small mistakes. No one's gonna notice your mistakes unless you point them out, so don't. <laughs> Being consistent is probably one of the key things to free motion quilting, and that takes practice. So just 
hop on your machine, grab some spare fabric, practice, practice, practice. Free motion quilting doesn't have any kind of, you know, you have to do this, these are instructions, you've got to follow them. You can do whatever works best for you. So that's what I take away from free motion quilting that I love and I'm hoping to share with you. I cannot wait to see your finished quilts. Please send me pictures, tag me on Instagram at Southern Sewing Company and let me know if I can answer any questions. I know this was a very broad kind of overage on free motion quilting. So be on the lookout in the future for a more in-depth guide to free motion quilting because there's a lot to it. But for now, that's all. I actually decided to do the walking foot waves for my quilt. So you will see that next week. And for part seven, which is the last part in this quilting series, we're squaring our quilt, we're binding it, and then we are done. We're gonna have a completed quilt. So make sure to like and subscribe for notifications for next Friday. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks y'all.